James and Greg Show. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. 
I had a mom and dad who looked out for me. And out of the community in Inglewood, I had about eight moms. I had Mama Smith. I had Mama Taylor. I had Mama Shores. I had Mama Malone. So if you did something wrong in any of, any of those houses, they called Mama Scott and say, I'm going to move his butt. Is that okay? She said, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yep. All those people in that community helped raise us. And 46 years later, we still can call each other at any given time and ask whatever it may be, for family, for friends, or whatever the case may be, to help us out. That's what raising, we always talk about, you know, takes a village, but it also has to start at home. It has to start at home first. That's the most important part. We have to teach our young people value now. We have to teach our young people dedication. We have to teach our young people what hard work is all about. Because they look at us, and they say, well, you know, hey, my dad and mom made it easy. We all know in this room it wasn't easy. You had to do some things that you probably wish you didn't have to do. You had to you know, put in some hours that you probably didn't wish you had to put in, but you had to put in the work to get to where you are today. I know my oldest son, one day, he was, he was asking me about buying him this video game when we were in the store, and I, I, you know, I posed this question to him. I said, do you want it or do you need it? My dad used to always do that to me. You don't need that. So he said, well, I wanted that. I said, well, what are you willing to do to earn it? How much work are you willing to put in to earn it? And a lot of our young people today in this society, they don't really understand what that means, to put in the effort, to be the very best that you can be in whatever field it might be that you chose to do. I just chose athletics. But the world has opened up for our young people now. You have so many avenues that you can take to be successful. So you have so many doors that are open to you to be successful. You just got to be willing to do the work. And listen, I've coached in the NBA for a number of years, and I've seen the generation of young people that come up with their hands out like cups, you know, looking at you like, what can you do for me? Instead of, you know, what can I do for you? And me, it was very simple when I was coaching because everything that I told our players to do, I've done. Sometimes they would look at me crazy. I said, listen, son, I, I did this way back in the day, and I, I got three championships for it. What have you done? It's that simple. What have you done? I don't have to prove anything to you. You got to prove something to me. There's a lot of people in here who I call OGs. I know, I know. Raise your hand, you know the OG is. <laughs> you got a lot of Indian Woods in LA, South Central. I know you, you know the OGs are in here. Original gangsters, or you know, you want to call it whatever. OG to me is a person who's willing to lend his knowledge to a youth, to a younger person, to a person who's coming up, to a young, young adult. You're willing to give him information to be successful. That's an OG. An old man is one of those dudes who's just bitter and don't give a, give a damn. Old man. That's an old man. I'm an OG. I want all my young people to be successful, but I also want them to understand that there are pitfalls in this world. Everybody don't want you to do well. Everybody ain't your friend. You gotta understand that as well. Okay? There's gonna be a lot of people and a lot of things that's in your way. And there's gonna come a point in time in your life where you're gonna have to choose which side of the road you're gonna go on. And hopefully you make the right choices. But when I'm interviewing people, for anything that I'm doing, basketball, uh, business, anything. A person that tells me they never had, or they, they've never failed, they've never been down and out, that, that person I'm not hiring. I want you to have some trials and tribulations that makes you who you are. And you young people are gonna go through it. You know, sooner or later you're gonna get it. You're gonna rise to the occasion. You're gonna be successful. That's what CPM is here for, to make sure that you guys have a chance to be successful. And that's what it's all about. Yes. I am so happy. Thank you. 
I am so happy and proud to be a product of Inglewood, California. I've grown up in Inglewood. We are raised in Inglewood. And I'm still able to go back to my elementary school, my junior high, my high school. As a matter of fact, at the Newport Beach Jazz Fest this summer, I saw uh, one of my teachers, Mr. Lewis. Remember Mr. Lewis still on? Remember Mr. Lewis? Mr. Lewis was our math teacher, and I'm still pissed at him because he gave me a B. He said, well, you're in my class later. That's what you got. I said, no, but I had A's on everything. And I'm, listen, I love math. I love math. So one thing I would tell Philip and them, I said, when I make it, you know, I'm going to have to be really good at math because I'm going to have to be able to count this money. That's what I would always tell them. But the one thing also that, that I want you young people to understand is that, that should, and it wasn't for me. I'm, you know, I'm joking at, at some, some point in time, but money cannot be your motivating factor. If that's the thing that you're motivated by is money and greed, it, it ain't going to happen. You got to love what you do. You got to have a passion for what you do. You know, to this day, I have a passion for basketball. I wish I was 20 years younger. But I can still play. And now I can just get on the court and shoot. And I can still out shoot a whole lot of people. Especially in the NBA. I'm just saying, man. Stats don't lie. My three point percentage was about damn near 40%. These guys are getting 20 million a year for shooting 33%. I don't understand. But it's okay. I'm not bitter. But if money is your main reason, you're not going to be successful. That cannot be your motivating factor. Find what you love, find what you have a passion for, and go at it 110%. Everything else will come. And it will come in bunches, believe me. When I made it to the NBA, I said, I just want to play 10 years, I'll be happy. You know, I played 14 years. When I got out of the NBA, I said, I want to be a coach. I coached for 17 years. And during that time of coaching, I started thinking, okay, what, what, what do I want to do after coaching? I want to be a businessman. I want to get into business. I want to find something that I have a love for, a passion for a business. I got a partner right now that, you know, we're doing all kinds of stuff, just having a great time. Just enjoying life. I said, you know what? I'm going to create another league. You, you guys are going to hear about this. So, you, so first of all, I'm going to make sure everybody signs one of these pieces of paper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, disclaimer that you, if you leave this room, it does not leave with you. And we're, we're, we're starting a league called Primetime Basketball. And mark my word, three or four years, you're going to hear about this league. And the reason I wanted to start this league is because there are so many players in the NBA that finished the NBA, three or four years later, they're broke. 87% of the league is broke when they leave in three or four years. Probably 80, 90% of those guys are African American. So this league that we're starting is based on having a mentorship program for guys so when they're finished with basketball, they can have life after basketball. And it's something that I have a, a deep passion for because I've seen a lot of these guys that have gone broke. First hand. So again, all the young people in this room, all the mentors in this room, we all know that money cannot be the reason that you're going after what you're going after. It has to be the passion and love for it. And if you stick to those things, I guarantee you, if you have great friends, great mentors, you have a passion for what you're trying to do in life, and you also have the education, have something to fall back on, don't always stick all your eggs in one basket. Put them in two or three different baskets. Have two or three other interests that you might want to achieve while you're going through what you're going through. Guarantee you to be successful. You'll be up here talking to my grandkids, hopefully. 
telling them the same thing. So again, I want to thank CBMLA for inviting me, especially my boy Tubby. Thank you, my brother. I love you. And my boy Phil Shores from Gilsmore. That's, we got all these next things. Like Phil Shores from Gilsmore. <laughs> that's, that's my ride and die boy right there. My ride and die boy right there. I want to thank you guys again for allowing me to come up and just share a little bit about my journey from Inglewood to here. Uh, things I've done, things I've been doing, things I'm doing. Um, and again, you know, tell me anytime. You know, anytime. Love to talk to the young fellas about what this is all about, and the women as well. You know, but God bless you guys. I really appreciate you guys allowing me to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for you know, what are you doing? there ever again in life. So what I want to do, I want to go to one. So somebody else give one so I can go to it. James gonna give one? Hey, we can do that, James. Let's see. Well, we're going to Beverly Hills, James. Cause we'll be there. I'll bring the boys on up. I'll bring the boy right on up to Rodeo Road. So we're gonna see you. The next one gonna be at your house. We do all the cooking there, James. We got you. Bye-bye. <laughs>